Have you tried these new Outlook calendar tips? To access your Outlook calendar, you could navigate to the calendar within Outlook and open it, or you can right click it and go pin shortcut to taskbar. What this does is it now adds a separate icon to your taskbar where you can access the Outlook calendar. It's important to note that if you are accessing Outlook from within the desktop app, you just want to ensure that you have toggled on the new Outlook. If you are accessing Outlook from the web, there will not be a new toggle on the top right hand corner, but you will have a similar experience to using the new Outlook. Hi, my name is Amy and these are my top seven new Outlook calendar tips. My favorite is number six, and I would love to know what yours is in the comments below. So let's nerd out. First off, we can add time zones to our calendar. So let's toggle to the week, and we will see the time slots on the left-hand side. Adding different time zones is helpful if you travel a lot for work, or if you collaborate with people in other time zones. So we can right click in any of these time slots and go time zones, then edit time zones. Your default time zone will appear and then we can go add time zone. I'm going to search for Toronto, Ontario, and I'm going to add a label as EST. Now, if you want to have this time zone accessible, but you don't want to see it on your calendar all the time, then you can toggle on or off this show in calendar, or we can even remove it. Once you have added your time zones, then we can save. And we'll just close out of here. And now on the left hand side, we are going to see those two time zones. So we have the EST, which is that label for the Toronto time zone, and we have the UTC-8. So I always recommend adding that label because it's a lot easier to identify the time zone. Next, we have our work hours and location. We will see on the top right hand side here that Mike is in the office today. And beside each of these dates, we have a little icon. So this is my work hour and location. So we can see that I am defined as remote today from 10.30 till 5 p.m. But if I decide to go to the office today, then I can select the dropdown and update this to the office. So we can see how quickly we can define these settings at the daily level. And this is such a great feature, especially in hybrid work environments. But if you want to update the default settings for your work hours and location, then we can go to this gear icon. And here we can select the days as well as our hours and location. And you can even define multiple slots for each day. Say you want to do the morning remote and the afternoon in the office. Once you are finished, then you can save. Next, we have meeting poll. And this is super helpful if you want to schedule a meeting with multiple attendees and you want to vote on the best time for the meeting. So let's click in a cell and create an event. We will just call it meeting. And then here we can add our attendees. So we'll add Mike. And we'll add office skills with Amy. Down below, we have this find a time. Now this is populating the suggested times around this time based on your work hours and location. And it even provides you with that little available status to let you know of everyone's availability for that time. But if this is an important meeting and you want to ensure that everyone can attend, then what we can do is vote on the time. So we can create a scheduling poll. Here, we can define our meeting duration as well as the date. And then down below, we can select some times to 
vote. So we can just select a few here. And if we scroll on down to the bottom, you'll notice that there are some other times, but we're not all available. Then we can click next. If your meeting is going to be in person, then you could define a location, but I'm going to leave the Teams meeting toggled on. And down below, we have some additional settings. So this top one, I recommend leaving it toggled on and it says schedule when attendees reach consensus. So once everyone has participated in this poll, then the poll will automatically schedule the meeting based on the best time. So by leaving this toggled on, you are automating the meeting creation process. So now we can go and create poll. This will populate an email with the participants, the subject, as well as the scheduling poll. You could add a custom message here. In Mike's email, he can click vote. And then here he can see the proposed times as well as what others have voted for. So here he can mark down his preferences and then submit his vote. When a consensus has been reached for the poll, then you will receive an email and a meeting will automatically be scheduled in your Outlook calendar accordingly. A quick pause in today's video to say that my ebook Navigating Microsoft Passages is available for free for you to download. Inside, you will find a treasure map to help you navigate Microsoft 365 apps with confidence so that you can increase your productivity and efficiency and reclaim your time for meaningful work. I will include a link at the end of this tutorial as well as in the description of this one. So be sure to check it out and grab your copy today. Number five is how we can schedule a meeting from an email. So Mike and I have been going back and forth on this dog fashion show location, and we're just going to have a meeting. So you could select the email and then from the home ribbon, you could go meeting. This will auto populate a meeting invitation, including the subject of the email, the email respondees, as well as embedding the email thread into the meeting description. Alternatively, you could use the My Day dropdown and then simply drag and drop the email and create an event. Number six is how we can define categories for our meetings and appointments and then use those as filters. So similar to what we have done here with this learning recurring time block. Let's open up that meeting that we just created. And then at the top here, we can go categorize. So you can see that I already have some categories defined, such as priority client, which would allow you to easily identify a priority client meeting. To add a new category or to manage our categories, then we can go manage categories. Here, you could create a new or you can update your existing ones. So if we go new category, we can give it a name and then define a color. Now we can close out of here and we can select that new category from the drop down. We can close out of here and back in our calendar, we can use the filters to clear out the appointments, which are our own personal meetings. And then we can filter for the categories. So we can unselect all, and then we can search for just that new category. So this allows you to sift through all of your calendar items and easily identify important meetings. Next, we will look at how we can bring our tasks from Microsoft Planner into Outlook. So this works for the my tasks and then the assigned to me area. So any plan where you have been assigned a task, that is what we will be able to integrate. From here, we can go select the ellipses on the far right and go add assigned to me to Outlook calendar. This generates an iCalendar link. So we just need to be mindful about who we share this link with because anybody that has access to the link 
will be able to access your assigned to me tasks. If you don't want to add this to your calendar or share the link with anybody, then we could toggle on to keep it private. Otherwise, you could select all of this here or go add to Outlook. In Outlook, we can then go add calendar. And from here, we want the subscribe from web. And here we can simply paste that link. Then we can give this calendar a name, which I'm just going to call mine task. And then I'm going to add a color so that I can easily identify these items. We can select a little charm icon and then just define where you want this calendar to be added. And then we can import. Just note that it can take up to 24 hours for this sync to work. But once it is finished setting up, then all of your assigned to me tasks within Planner will sync to Outlook via this toggle here. Next is how we can share our calendar. So if we go up to share calendar, then we can define who we specifically want to share this with and what they are going to have access to. So you could let people see just when you are busy or you could go as far as delegating. In this example, I want Mike to be able to see all of my meeting and appointment titles and location. So then I will share. Then Mike will receive an email and he can accept the sharing of this calendar and go add this calendar. Now in his calendar, he can toggle me off or on so that he can see them together simultaneously. Alternatively, he can even go to a split view and then he can view his own calendar and my calendar on two separate windows. If you want to learn how to create a booking page so that people can easily book appointments with you, then you can check out this video here.